and we turned it into a joke because we're like, why are you asking for permission? Yeah. Just do what you need to do, right? Yeah. Because you gave me that open door. Yeah, to, to kind of give you resistance, right? right? When you give right. somebody the open door to give you resistance, right. you're going to get resistance. Right. But if you say, hey, I'm going to go up, uh, out and buy a bike. You want to go with me? Uh -huh. You know, then it's a different conversation. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Do The Work Podcast. I am your host, AZ Araujo. And I'm Carla Araujo. And uh, we were just talking about it, Carla, like, you know, I think I attract more people to follow our podcast. It's a very popular <laughs> podcast. I think it's my personality. I think it's my ravishing good looks I, I, that you really go gets with that, people. Oh, it's all right with me. But we have a very interesting topic today. And uh, uh, if you've never joined us before, we do go down memory lane. And you might find us kind of bickering at each other, arguing sometimes, not disagreeing, but that's okay. Because, you know, some of these feelings from back then still bleed into who we are today, it's even not, though it's a different person. I know, I know. That's like, and sometimes we even leave this room like kind of pissed off, kind at, of each pissed off at each other. Yeah. And it takes Because those memories, takes they come rolling back. back. You know, they it's, do. They it, do. It, it, they bring us back to that yeah. emotional state. Yeah. Uh, that that whole negative thought process. I think people only see what they see now, not the aftermath of the podcast. Yeah, the aftermath is sometimes not not very yeah, nice. Yeah, we go our separate ways. We've done a lot better when we were first doing these. Remember, yeah. like we would leave the room I just leave absolutely tears. pissed off, yep. or or just uh, sucked back right back to the future. I mean, back to the, you know, yep. our history. Yep. Um, but today we have a very interesting topic, and we both have gone through this in our own experiences, and that is. Uh, you didn't mar marry your mommy or daddy. Stop asking for, for permission. permission. Stop asking for permission. Now, I do want to say, of, of course, um, you know, there are unfortunately some relationships that are not up to par when it comes to, you know, the respect, love and appreciation. Um, and, and there's some that are emotionally and physically abusive. And, and we're not we're not talking to those individuals. Um, obviously, that is a, a concern. That is something at a different level. Right. We're just discussing it from our own experiences. Never want to you know, uh, diminish the, the, um, how bad a relationship can be. Um, you know, there, there's some relationships where, you know, the, the, the husband or the wife, uh, you know, most of the time they spend humiliating the next person, embarrassing them, making them feel stupid physically and emotionally. I think if you're them, in that type of relationship, this um, is not for you. This, this is, is not, not for you. you and yeah. Yeah. you definitely need consult to get help yep, and, consult help. Yep. But with that disclaimer out, Carla, we, we will discuss our pettiness, you know, back and forth, because it is pettiness. It is I pettiness, mean, so it's it right. Pettiness. But I think we all go through it. We do. And how we handle it. Especially is, when we're around each other yeah, all the time. Yeah, it is. It's petty, and, and people are on the other end, like, I can't believe they fight over that. Well, we just kind of fought on that last week, honey. You know, things like that. So yeah. it's just kind of funny. Yes, it is petty, but I think we all go through it. And um, the nice part about it is we're very open on how we handle it. Yeah, we are very open. And, um, you know, we got to think about it. If we roll it all the way back, um, you know, we both had a different... Um, way we grew up right what we saw our parents do is very different and I, I think we, we try to apply into our relationships what we saw our parents do right and uh, one of the things that um, I, I constantly saw was you know my parents didn't do anything without first consulting with each other or mm -hmm. asking for yep. permission with each other right and in my household my mom was the, the decision maker Right. You know, so she was the one that kind of pioneered all the uh, decisions. Right. And, um, you know, so when we got married, um, without us, either one of us knowing, we fell into the trap. Right. Or you should you fell into the trap. Well, of and, and in my household, asking for permission. Yeah. In my household, it was my dad who ran the household and my yeah. mom kind of did what we you know what what he approved and she kind of it was at a little bit 50 50, I would say, but not so much. My mom would still do it, but kind of more in out of um, anger, frustration, spite, spite right. Spite or uh, hidden. Hidden, right. So she would do what she wanted, but just more hidden. It was yeah. in like a relationship, a but my dad definitely, yeah. yep, of a discussion or my mom kind of taking, you know, the lead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we kind of fell into that that uh, that whole trap, right? Um, you know, when we moved into each other, it was kind of like the 50-50 thing, right? right? It was a 50-50 thing. Um, I was working, you were working, but yet... Um, it, well, I think it was 50-50 thinking you thought it was 50-50, and I kind of led in the direction of like, let me just do things without him knowing I'm doing things. Mm. Um, the simple stuff, shopping, uh, making decisions. It was just the simple stuff that you didn't know because it was like, well, if I told you, you I'd get upset. You would get upset. Yeah. Uh, there was one situation that, uh, and, and again, you know, during that time I was making more money uh, than you. Um, and, you know, that which meant that put me in a position 
unknowingly that I was the, the lead decision maker, right? Right. The lead decision maker. And I think a lot of, uh, you know, housewives or house husbands nowadays, um, you know, they kind of fall into that trap because the husband is working all the time right. and the woman is not bringing in cash, even though she's, um, you know, contributing to the family oftentimes more than the, the next person that has a nine to five or job. Even, even if the, the wife is, is doing her part in um, taking care of the kids and household, that's a that's a huge responsibility. Exactly. Not getting the credit for that. Right. And the husbands are saying my wife does a lot. She's we're 50 50. But at the end of the day, are you really 50 50? Yeah. Is a wife really being honest? Can she really get up and say, well, I'm going to go purchase thousand dollar pair of shoes without asking you for permission? Yeah. And so it's always like, no, let me try to budget. And it's like so it's always. Well, there's a shame that comes from right, that, right? Because right. I know, I know, I know that whenever we got into a, a disagreement about the, the spending habits, um, I always looked at you like you have to ask me. You can't be spending all this money, and and this is something that our clients go uh, are constantly right. fighting about. Um, you know, hey, the husband's interpretation is she's always spending the money. I'm trying to save. I have this goal for us, and she's always spending the money. And in reality, um, you know, if we start thinking about this, like during that time, um, as I started progressing in my career, I, I didn't hesitate. I didn't hesitate on spending money for the sake of my business, right? If I needed uh, brand new golf clubs, I would go out there and buy $2,500 golf clubs right. without hesitating once. But then if you wanted to go out and buy something, I'd be like, well, how much is that? Well, it was kind of funny because you would buy me expensive gifts mm -hmm. all the time. Under my, my terms. Under right? your terms, right? Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to go and spend, like I said, Five thousand dollars shoes without your approval. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, of course, no, you're not buying five thousand. I'm shoes. sorry, five hundred thousand yeah. dollars shoes, or or maybe a hundred dollar purses, two hundred dollars, however yeah. you want it. I mean, come on, I'm I'm I, I like I'm I'm a, I'm a good spender on when it comes to shoes and purses and stuff. So I'm throwing the prices out there. But at the end of the day, it would be like you're okay to do that, but I wasn't okay to do that. So you'd surprise me. But then at the end of the day, can I get up and go buy that purse? The guilt would settle in. Like I don't know, we're on this budget. So exactly what that meant was two completely different interpretations. I'm, does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. It was different. It was different. So was I able to do that? No, just because it was under your terms. Yeah, it was. And, um, you know, for me, if I wanted to go out and expensive dinner with clients or, or take them out and, and do these things and for the sake of the business, I would I would drop that money on a dime like right. it would it would I would not even hesitate if right. I need to spend uh, for for new computer new any for travel or for even hiring a coach like I didn't think twice but yet a lot of our arguments would come when you wanted to do certain things and because I was at that moment the leading uh, bread maker even though your contribution was at the same level if not even more right. Um, during the years, you got asked, you, you got used to asking for permission. Right. You got used to saying, hey, I want to go buy this. I want to go buy that. In my case, I was just like, I, I need this for the business. There is no asking. Right. I'm just going to do it. And that kind of put a, a little bit of a wedge in our relationship because um, you want, you needed things, you wanted things. And here I was like, like daddy saying. It was, it was even, the, it was even, the, let's bring back the coaching. Even when you, till this day, you get coached and yeah, you spend, spend tens of thousands of dollars correct. every year. But and when I turned around and said, I need to hire myself a coach with no questions asked, you were like, well, let's see what that looks like financially. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit. Like when it came to you, I was 100% supportive. Mm -hmm. But when I had to get it done over here, it was like, well, let's, let's see what this looks yeah. like on paper. Um, so it, it, it is funny how the tables are turned now. Um, everything has changed, obviously, now. There is no permission. There is something. Um, I think we had to separate, like, asking for permission versus telling you out of respect what my next move yeah, is. Yeah, run, running your plans right. past. Like, we run our plans uh, right. towards each other. But if a decision's made, it's going to be done. Now right. it's like, okay, how can we make this work? Right. You know, when, when you decided you wanted to get a coach, I might have resisted a little bit. But then what did I say? I said, yeah, go yeah, for it, it. do yeah. it, let's but get it done. But the fact that I was still in the mindset of asking yeah. you for permission kind of ticked me off a little bit because it shouldn't be a permission. Hey, can I? It should have been like, okay, I'm thinking hey, about I'm thinking it. about hiring a coach and it's going to happen. As to when it's going to happen, that's the decision I need to make on my own. But the way I approached it was like, hey, can I get a coach? I think I need a coach. Um, but now, again, I've caught myself several times because I go back to my old ways asking for permission versus telling you this what needs to be mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little – it's the yeah, way but, we say it. Yeah, it's um, the way we say it. Right. I guess it's the way we, we feel about saying right. it. You know, Because again, I don't think there was anything wrong the way I responded because, I mean, if you would ask me years ago, 
then we could have this. But I was very supportive right from right. the beginning. I think it was your interpretation on how you actually right. presented what you wanted to do. And, again, and we're talking about, you know, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollar right. expenditure here. Right. And I think what's also it's different too, like if we're set on something, like if the individual is set on something that they want to truly do. They're kind of, they go forward with the question on telling their spouse, but if they depend on their, where their mindset of the spouse is at, their response is going to be different. Mm. So now I ask you for your opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to take the opinion, but if I'm already set on doing something and I go to you and you're under stress or you're a certain way, right? Your response might be like, why don't you wait till next year? Because I'm asking you for your opinion, right? Obviously. But if I'm already set in my ways, it's like, I'm not going to come and ask you for permission. Just kind of see what you got well, to say about yeah, it. Yeah, if you come right? at me sheepishly, right? If you right. come at me, hey, I'm thinking about, then yeah. I'm not, all of a sudden you give permission to the other person. Right, because like, you hey, got that no. control, right? Without not even knowing right. that the other spouse is doing that. You, you've given me that control because right. you're right. asking me sheepishly yep. about how you want to approach things. Yep. But what I've noticed is when you want something, you're going to get it. My job is just to be like, okay, let's, I either support or I give, you know, evidence of why it might be a better idea to go, uh, you know, some other time. Right. And the same thing for us, you know. Um, just this past uh, two weeks ago, I had to fly out to um, uh, uh, was it Orange County, and um, I, I didn't ask for permission. I made the plans, right? But I'd let you know why, because it affects schedules. Right. It affects, and I wasn't doing this just for the sake of going out there and hanging out with my boys. I knew it was something that I needed to do in order to continue to build the skill sets that I need to build a business and, right. to, bu and to build what it is. And you were just automatically, that's great. Awesome. Let's see what we can do. Hey, these are the schedules for the girls. What I'll do is I'll take them, you can take them in the morning and I'll, and I'll pick them up at night and you come in the next day and pick up Abigail from the volleyball game. Right. So we planned it all out, but it wasn't like, hey, babe, um, I'm thinking about doing this thing. It was more like, I, I, I know I needed this decision for my own personal being. Right. And then I, I talked to you about it and you took it like, okay, let's schedule yep. this around you because you saw my conviction in my decision, yep. right? Now, uh, that could have been taken a little different if I would approach like, hey, uh, can I go? You might have, and, and you're always very or, supportive. Or you would have approached it, I need to go. Yeah. Versus like, hey, this is the plan. This is what I'm going to yeah. do. So you need to kind of work it around it here. So there's just kind of different ways of asking. I need to go versus, hey, can you think I can make it? It's yeah. like you just kind of came in strong well, knowing what your decision was already going it was a to conviction. be made. Yeah. Right. And then it was kind of going based around my schedule and it had to work. Yeah, it had to work. Yeah. And we were going to make it work one way or another. Right. But the decision had been made. I, I wasn't in a place of indecision. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what happens when a person is not decisive they now get upset with their spouse for making a decision for them. They couldn't decide. Right. And when the spouse decides for them, then they grow spiteful. It's right. like, oh, you know, you didn't let me do this. And you, and then they start bringing evidence of yep. how they spent money in the past. But if you come in with that certainty and that conviction that yeah. this is really what you want, this is how it's going to benefit you, then go for it's, it. And it could be something so small. That's what's funny. It's like you spent thousands of dollars on your whole Ironman thing yeah. and the, oh, from, the, from the bike to the coaching, right? And I remember even then I took myself, like we're at a restaurant. You're like, hey, I'm going to spend so much, you know, whatever amount of money on this bike and on this coach. And I'm yeah, like, I spent 10, and in my head more. financially, I'm thinking, um, yeah, is that smart? But then I have to go back to my training days yeah. where we were flying out to different states um, all week over the country. After, all over the country from week after week after week, right? From my suits that were super expensive to the first, uh, you know, we used to sit in the first class flights to the super expensive, um, everywhere we went. The hotels, just, the, hotels the, the flights. The entry fee, the coach fees. Right. Like we spent over $100,000. Over $100,000 just and, competing. And, just and competing. then it comes to you. It was like, well, is this really smart? It's yeah. only because in my head, it's like, we've, we've already done this. We've been here already. Why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, again, you're asking me in that time. I asked you a little bit sheepishly, hey, should I buy yeah. another bike? Because the year before I bought another bike, and remember And we that? actually laughed about it and we turned it into a joke because we were like, why are you asking me for permission? Yeah. Just do what you need to do, right? Yeah. Because you gave me that open door. Yeah, to, to kind of give you resistance, right? right? When you give right. somebody the open door to give you resistance, right. you're going to get resistance. Right. But if you say, hey, I'm going to go up, uh, out and buy a bike, you want to go with me? Uh -huh. You know, then it's a different conversation. But this time around, I think there was a little bit of guilt. But at the end of the day, I know what that does for me as a person. Right.
Right. This bike is not going to go and, and just sit on the side yeah. of my garage. Yeah. It's going to have thousands right. and thousands of miles on it. And in fact, it makes me better. Yeah. And I would actually go a step further and say, because of the Ironman I did back in October, I am a better business right. person today. Right. And and we don't see past that. But again, yeah, I, I kind of came at you a little yeah. bit like uh, scared. And you were like, well, do you really need to do spend that really much money? Need, yeah. And, it, and we turned it into a joke in the restaurant, yeah. remember, because it was like, well, that's what I did. That's what I had to do back then. So, yeah. you know, it kind of goes both ways. But yeah, if you came in here kind of like, you know, asking me for permission. That's why there's that's why this podcast is based on ask, you know, permission or just going all in and just getting yeah. it done, right? What you need to do. So there is a difference on how you well, ask your I think spouse. It, it can really, really ruin a relationship if, if you go at the approach very um, hesitantly, right? Right, Because it's real easy just to blame the other person for shutting down your plans when yep. you really couldn't make a decision to and begin it's with. And it's really hard when you're that spouse who, um, and I'm talking men or women, because you have some men who stay at home, by the way. I've run into several this week I've, alone. I've heard of yeah, them. <laughs> this week alone, a lot of men stay at home. It's really hard um, to take that um, in consideration as to like, hey, I'm going to make my own decisions, right? Because again, you're working under one income. Yeah. And so the spouse somewhat, even though they tell you you're 100% in this business, you take care of the financing. Do you really have, you know, are you really taking care of the things that you need to take care of as a person? Um, or do you need to ask for permission before, you know, you do the things that you know are good for you kind of yeah. deal. So, and it could be fun. It could be the fun stuff. It can be the necess necessities. It can be something that you just want um, and you still well, need to ask that permission. Yeah, so and I remember one time that, you know, you would come at me always like, hey, I need to buy this. And I was like, really? Do you need to really buy that? How much, how expensive is that? Right. And I remember one time, I think you were kind of getting fed up about this, but you said, I'm a woman. What I need to buy is expensive. Right. You know, and and, um, you know, and I don't understand that from my approach, you know, you know, I, I don't spend a lot on, on clothes or or, you know, th there's no makeup expense on my side. There is no hygiene expense on my side. There's no lingerie woman, on your side. There isn't, any, <laughs> you know, and uh, and, you know, it's funny because we have um, some clients um, who've actually had this argument yeah. where the wife was spending a lot of enormous amount of money on um, like bras. And, yeah. And, 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 yeah. But it's like, and the it's, husband's like, she comes home with a couple of hundred dollars like every single time she's shopping. I'm like, well, do you do understand that she is a woman yeah. versus a man who just buys briefs out there? There is they a could get Hanes at three, yeah. four, eight bucks. You know, I mean, you, go to, you can go to Walgreens <laughs> and buy the I don't know how much mascara costs there, but twelve dollars versus a, you know, 40, 50 dollar mascara. But then you're telling her, oh, her eyelashes look so beautiful. It's kind of like one of those things like, well, it's not cheap to take care of ourselves. Yeah. But yet you love what you're looking at. Right. Exactly. And when you don't, you're kind of like, hey, why don't you buy yourself a little bit nicer? Do you know what that costs? That little bit nicer that you're, you're, you're stating? I don't think the husband actually knows the amount of money that is goes into a woman that mm -hmm. wants to build that confidence, feel beautiful, exactly. feel all these beautiful things, not so much for the permission of others, but because we want to feel beautiful and amazing, right? And that can mean different to every woman. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, you different. know, from the husband's side is like, hey, you know, I work, I go and work at eight o'clock in the morning and I don't get home till seven o'clock at night. And my wife is just spending all these money on, on clothes. And it's like, well, you're, you're, not, you're not crediting her for all the work she's done. Right. As many hours as you're gone out of the house, guess what she's doing? She's not having a ball. Right. She's not out there partying and drinking it up and having a good old time she's doing you know what what the what the uh, agreement is right. the, the the agreement you both had she was going to stay home and take care of the kids and uh, handle certain things and it's like you got to be able to not nitpick the expenses make more money make right. more money because at the end of the day she's contributing to your business as much as you do because if you had the kids and you had to take care of other stuff you wouldn't be on the growth uh trajectory you're right. currently on and I think for men, and I'm talking just for men specifically, I've stayed at home my, uh, wives, th this is a dangerous place to be in because what's going to happen, it's, it's, it's going to, uh, the resentment's going to brew. And you're not going to have any idea why she's unhappy. You're not going to have any idea why things are not working out. And it's because where, where you shut her down. You right. shut her down and not give her enough credit for the things that she's actually doing. Right. And um, but, you know, for us, it, 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 it started going down that path until one day you decided not not to you know, continue to contribute to that. Right. And uh, our dynamic, our finances has changed. And now I don't question anything. Right. Right. You go out and bring bags. Uh, and it's because you work just as hard in the business as I do. Um, and you've helped grow this. And it's, it's like it's your company. And if you feel like you need to buy that, then buy it and vice versa. Yep. You know, there's another thing, too. I remember I was reading this right here on asking for permission for simply like just going, going out to dinner, going out to dinner. 
going out to dinner. With I remember your friends, a couple, you're with of, your, yeah. couple of years back, I can't find it, but a couple of years back, it got me thinking um, when I had girlfriends ask me if I can go out to dinner with them on just kind of, you know, after the office or whatever. And I remember being like, oh, let me, this was years ago. This is when we first started dating. Um, and I was like, well, let me go ask for permission because I don't, out of respect, right? And they would look at me like, why do you need permission to ask? Well, that led on for a couple of years thinking, well, that is not what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Just out of respect to ask the other person, um, hey, can I go out to dinner or, or what? But it, it did get me thinking over the years that I started getting resentment. Like, why am I always asking you for permission? So there was the, it was the way I was asking you. I was asking literally my big daddy for permission yeah. versus telling you, hey, on Friday, I already have plans is there anything we and I got you and I got going on or anything because I liked I would like to go to dinner with my friends yeah. versus hey do you think I can go to dinner on Friday yes it's like you were asking like my daughters asked me to right. go out with her friends to, right. to dinner today right yep. and yep. of course that that big daddy syndrome pops in right away it's like well uh, where I start questioning right your, and your it did intentions. get me and when I was reading this article I was like wow that's exactly the thing that I was going through when I first met you and it went on like that for a marriage for a very long time hey do you think I can go versus yeah. um do you think you can go watch the kids versus hey hey, my mom's watching the kids. I'm going out to dinner on Friday. I don't think you and I have plans, right? I'll be right back. You know, I'm not going to be late or anything. Out of, like, that. that is out of respect. But I totally understand how some of these women get that, and, and men get that confused, um, asking for permission versus telling someone ahead of time, these are the plans. You kind of, you know, so you're well, invited you know, to dinner and you're You know, you're running go. your pants past your spouse, is it is a sign of respect. You obviously, you know, it it is going to affect the other person, right? Um, and because, especially when it comes to schedules, finances, kids, it, it's a, it is a sign of, uh, of, of respect. And also it provides another insight, a different insight, better decisions are right. uh, ultimately come out of certain things. Right. Right. And I've, I, I've come to you on certain decisions that I've made in my mind. And then I got your opinion. I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't consider that. I'm going to go this route when it right. comes to that. Right. Um, and then at the same time, it keeps you engaged. Yep. You know, uh, the decisions that I make keeps you, keeps you engaged. Even with my Ironman, I, I spent... <laughs> A lot of money just getting all the all the uh, all the necessary equipment and and just you know the coaches and and everything that comes along with it. But it was never once questioned. But I did get some insights from you on what you experienced during your competitive days, you know. And a lot of that it's in the mindset. So that engaged us yep. because now we're we're in a different. We're talking about competition, and you thrive on competition. And and I've gotten a few things from from you on that. So Az. When you ended up, I'm gonna have a, have a question for you. So when Wait, you, where did it come from? Did, I saw you looking at your phone. What's up? <laughs> no. <laughs> when you started feeling like when I started kind of making, um, I, I would say aggressive moves because they would go from you. You were spiteful. I was spiteful. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Did you feel like the conflict between us? Did you feel like? I think the first one of the major moves that I've ever made. Um, you know, I think one of the, I think one of the major moves I made was when I purchased like the jet skis, for example. Yeah, that was huge. I didn't even I was just I was out there already. Like, hey, you, you just bought them. Come help me back them up because I just bought brand new, you know, yeah. jet skis. Same thing goes with um, like twelve grand, like, <laughs> like thirteen thousand. So that's kind of one of the first things that I, you know, one of the major purchases without your you didn't even know that I was out there buying yeah. them, right? So, but I guess what I'm asking is, how did you feel? Did you feel like it was against you? Um, no, I just felt like that there was a reason why you were so like set on, on doing this. And it came from your childhood about, you know, you want, you know, spending time with, with your parents doing certain things right. like for you, it was camping. And, and what you saw wasn't the cost of the, of the jet skis. What you saw was the experience and the, in the short time we have with our girls. Right. So when you explained that my job was just to come in and just, you know, support that by choosing the right, the best, the, you know, the best one yeah, out there. Yeah. And that's where I got involved. But okay. I knew that your your decision was made. So I wasn't going to, you know, I wasn't going to battle you on that one uh -huh. because you made a lot of good points. Yeah. You know, it's, it's great. And we've used them a number of times and our daughters just absolutely love them. But right. at first I was like, dude, that's a lot of money. Like, why do we actually need these? So only to use it a few times a year? Right. Well, for that experience alone, the few times a year that we right. do use it, right. it's well worth it. So I, I saw your conviction, and if I was going to stop you from that, it was going to create yeah. even greater issues at home. Well, it's kind know, of funny that you say that. So we had, we had somebody I walked in the other day and was like, it's funny, you're ordering gym equipment, like full-blown commercial gym equipment, yeah. having that stuff crated in. I'm complaining that my, my wife has an Amazon box at the front door every day. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what's funny is, is 
I don't see things like that anymore. It's no longer, hey, AZ, this is what I need for my business. It's like, hey, this is what I ordered. It's being, you know, shipped in 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 three weeks or whatnot. But it's just one of those things. I think once I made that massive move, it felt so empowering that now moving forward, no longer is like, do you think I can? It's just like, hey, something's being shipped in, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, but I think we process it at a different level now. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. We understand that there's a benefit just beyond us. Like, I don't don't buy things just for my singular benefit. It's like, it goes beyond us. So when you're buying that equipment, commercial grade equipment, I know that, I've seen nothing but growth right. and you've seen nothing right. but growth. And every time we invest in ourselves, it seems to like double or right. triple it on itself each and every time. Right. But I guess I've been asked that question, like, how did you start that? It's like, we just have to make one massive move and you have to feel empowered well, by it. Well, it starts with one small decision right. and then it leads to right. b- bigger decisions. Without not allowing the other person to jump in and say, why did you do that? Because it's not against them. So they're always thinking, because they, they always have that control and you're constantly giving that control. Like the way I grew up, it was just like, I'll still do it, but I'll be spiteful about it and I'll do it behind his back kind of deal, right? And then he'll end up finding out about it, we'll fight and then he's over it. It's like, no, you, that's what you don't want to do. Um, so that's kind of the way I saw it in, in, in years ago where it was like, he'll find out about it, we'll get an argument, and then he'll get over it. Yeah. And then I'll do it again. And I understand so, there's, you know. You know it's, living, like, it's almost like kids, like acting like is. children. But, you know, there are budgets. You know, we, we had to work within a certain budget uh, before. And, and um, obviously it's it's got to fit within certain parameters, right? But uh, what I did, I did find myself but, making decisions that benefited but me. But how do you do me. that? How do you do that? How, well, okay, so there's budget. Say we're working with a budget. How do you, how do I know, like, how do you meet in the middle? Like your bike is the, your bike has to be done, right? Versus yeah. wait, wait a minute. I, I want to buy, I don't know. Let's just something, something ridiculous. I want to buy a, a I think a the purse. first way. I like think how, the first way. And then, so this. you're going to give me your, well, my bike is needed. Well, so is my purse. Yeah. Like how, how is that? Well, how, I think, I think that the, the miscommunication comes when the husband or the wife doesn't keep the other person in line with the finances, right? Where like if only one person controls the finances, it's really easy to say, no, we're watching our expenses. Yeah, we're so doing what this. is your importance? You no, know? it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so. not. The thing is, um, the way you're able to mitigate that, uh-huh. right, or to come to a solution is to have both parties involved in the finances, right? Because, you know, if one person has complete control of the finances, you really don't know the full story, right? right. You, uh, you know, I was out there spending every day on lunch and going out to dinners, buying my clients expensive, you know, wine and and, and dining them and, and entertaining. Um, and, and here you would ask for something, I'd be like, it's too expensive, but yet I just threw down four or $500 on a dinner and, and it, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't, combined because to me it's like money's being wasted but it is only for my benefit or for the benefit right. of the business I but guess never did where, I consider I guess, your benefit yeah I guess that's where the conflict comes when you when you share that um when you when that marriage or those sp- the spouses share that account you don't know what's benefiting who does that make sense like I don't like that's your benefit but what about mine yeah so you can always reason with the other I'm not reason but you can always tell the other person well yours is not as important as mine yeah um so and there's all there's that spouse that's always like well I don't want to start any fire I'll just kind of keep quiet yeah and so that's kind of where the resentment starts after year after year doing that yeah resentment does come and it's the unfortunate part and uh we had it towards each other for a long time and uh you know for me I'll tell you where my resentment started coming from um, you know, I made a lot of bad decisions when it came to my credit and the decisions, the investments that I bought, and, and my credit was in the gutter. It was in the gutter. And, and uh, it seemed like anything that I wanted, I needed to ask for permission yeah. from you. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was almost like I was uh, swallowing my, my pride, my manhood, you know, yeah. because I was never dependent on anyone. Right. In fact, I prided myself on how spectacular my credit was. Well, you know, I made a few bad decisions that caused me to, to delay on, uh. on payments and, and I couldn't afford certain things, right? And, and your credit was, was perfect. And in order for me to buy anything or to, it, it seemed like I needed to come to you and that, uh, I grew a little bit of resentment towards that because now I literally had to come and ask you for permission. And what was, and was kind of nice, it was, it's kind of nice that you say that because I started growing resentment on the other end. Like, hey, I have 100% control now. Yeah. I'm going to do what I want yeah. without that permission. So mm-hmm. it's kind of funny how we came together. Yeah, and it just because it was the other clashed. way around before. Yeah. It was yeah. the other way around before. Yeah. And now, obviously, we've we've changed our financial uh, situation. We've bounced back. We've come back with a with a vengeance. Yeah. And uh, now it's just we we more consult with each other of what we're doing. I'm, I'm going to be making a, a pretty big uh, ex, uh, expense here sh- shortly, but it was your support all the way. It's like, hey, well, if you think you need it, then go for it. If you don't, then no big deal. Yeah. 
Um, but it, it's this type of communication that really allows us to continue to flourish. And, and um, I learned a lot during that time. I learned a lot of how it, how bad it feels, you know, having to ask for permission. And I know I don't want to put you in that situation because when I met you, you were an independent, strong woman, which I just uh, slowly but surely started eroding. I started eroding your confidence. I started eroding who you were as a person. And uh, before long, we were both miserable. Right. right? We were both miserable. And uh, because you're empowered, because you make your own decisions and I make my own decisions, we come together as powerful beings right. with with similar goals. And I think when I got that. When it got that power back, I felt so empowered. It felt so good. I never yeah. wanted to go back. So, and it's just, I just started becoming more and more independent back to who I was. Mm -hmm. um, I never wanted to lose myself again. So I think it, it's a beautiful thing when we come together and no, it, it works now. It, it works. works. And I think if you're in a situation where you constantly find yourself asking for permission, like the decisions have to start now. It, it has to come with your conviction first and foremost, your conviction and, and, realizing that it's better to take a little bit of friction in the or conflict in the, in the front end than to like like just smolder over it right for years to come yes. where you're dwelling on it and then it, it it comes out in a in a more aggressive negative way so it's better to just deal with the conflict now if you need certain things stand up and i remember you're like i i need this yeah i need this period it's like oh, okay i can't argue with that you know right uh, but again, it came on the back of you asking versus you telling and yep. making a decision. Yep. So way you ask for permission versus just telling them, yeah. like straightforward. Well, good. Well, I want to thank you, right? We're, we're uh, done with this episode of um, Do The Work podcast, but uh, I want to invite you to continue to follow us. Uh, you can go to dothework.com and sign up for our email list, and we'll notify you anytime we have a live recording like we do have today. And you can always find the, the, um, uh, the recording on your favorite podcast provider, uh, Apple, uh, Spotify, and any others that are out there. Carla, I want to thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for being you. on I my think, show. Oh, what? I think, it's a, I think today was a very beautiful topic only yeah. because I think it left us both feeling empowered. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the end result is through that's this whole entire say. argument is both feeling empowered and not feeling belittled by one another. Um, and you're not my daddy. You are my spouse and 100% respect you. But at the end of the end, at the end, we're both individuals um, that make our, you know, our individual decisions without asking and, and for so approval or permission. And I think that's what causes so. um, divorce is feeling disempowered, right? Yeah. Feeling disempowered. Yeah. And, and this is a step towards making your relationship rock solid right. is understanding that you still have a voice yep. and uh, you still have contribution. And uh, don't let anybody discredit you for the contribution you're actually right. making. So I do apologize for the guy I used to be. Okay. I apologize for the woman I used to be. But well, you want to apologize for the woman you are now? No, nope, I ain't no? taking that back. No. Nope. Can you apologize? Although, thank you for supporting the woman I am today. Yeah, you're welcome. I love you. Little fist pump. Love All you right. too. Guys, thank you again, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye now. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Do The Work Podcast, brought to you by Do The Work Coaching and Consulting. You can watch this and other episodes by subscribing to our channel on YouTube or by visiting our site directly at dothework.com. For our audio listeners, you can listen to this episode and many others on your preferred podcast provider. Finally, to stay up to date on the next time we will be going live, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 